श्री विजय मर्चेंट मिस्टर राखड़े ऑल दी सहजोगी हु हैव कम हियर टू एक्सप्रेस देयर लव फॉर मी एंड ऑल द रेस्ट ऑफ द पीपल हु आर इन द सर्च ऑफ ट्रूथ इट वाज रियली वेरी ग्रेशियस ऑफ श्री मर्चेंट टू कम एंड इनाग्रेट दिस बुक I have been from my childhood watching his cricket. I must say I am quite a big cricket fan myself. I think cricket is the game which is really sahaja between one extreme of football and another boring game of golf. And I always have been appreciating the way he has been manning our teams and has been such a good captain to our country and have been admiring him. the way he has been able to handle the glory in the field of cricket even after that instead of wasting his life like all other uh, successful people of this life in retirement he is doing such a great work and such a feeling he has for all the downtrodden and the poor people of this country shows that he is a very sensitive personality <coughs> i am very thankful to him the way he is been kind to all of us and have been here and spoke to us about his own work i agree with him entirely that the downtrodden are the ones who are uh, not so well off as we are or we can say the one who is not such a good batsman the weaker one has to be helped and sustained by the stronger one this is exactly what we are doing in sahaja yoga what we are doing in sahaja yoga is that we are reaching to the roots of poverty we are not just trying to do do the patchwork of just improving the material conditions of people because you have seen in the world people they have been very affluent in the countries like switzerland and sweden where people are very affluent and they are committing suicide the maximum number of suicides are coming from sweden i had informed you last time that we had some people coming from sweden and their vibrations were something like the dead bodies we have to know the roots of our troubles first of all if we just try to treat the symptoms we cannot go too far and maybe that we may cure one symptom but may cure another symptom i'll give you a very simple example of my husband's Uh, sensitivity to his organization which was shipping corporation he is another philanthropic gentleman and he wanted to do a lot of good for the drivers who were in the organization and he said their pay is very little and the women uh, and the men are uh, really living in substandard conditions we must do something about that and so he started raising their pay after three months or so suddenly uh, i had a call from a lady she said we are the wives of the drivers and we want to come and see you i said it's a good idea you all must come and see me because in shipping corporation i always had a very motherly role towards all the employees and they would always come and tell me if they thought that it would be difficult to talk to my husband now they come round and they told me that it's nice that he has given us lot of pay but do our drivers know how to handle that additional money now they have taken to drinking they have taken to uh, bad women and they are not even giving us money what they were giving us what is the basic root of poverty it is not god it is human beings it, the human beings who have got too much ambitions human beings who are all the time running after the mirage of money the money oriented societies of the west have created this kind of mentality even in the east where people want to have everything of the world they want to have today the house tomorrow the car day after tomorrow the helicopter maybe they may like to have even a big jumbo jet to themselves how do you curb this unless and until you bring those people who are amassing this money too much and extracting the money from the poor and on the other hand the poor who do not feel responsible enough to create work for themselves and not to be parasites on anyone 
these two factors must be tackled at the same time. And Sir Yoga is the only way you can be. Now, you must have seen that in Sir Yoga, mostly the people of about middle class people are there. Very poor people are also there. We have lots of poor people from the villages. In the Sahaja Yoga, when the Kundalini rises, you get your own power within yourself by which you feel satisfied. And this too much of hankering after money, position and all that dies out. And such a person himself thinks of the others who are around because on his vibrations he can feel and he can feel the needs of others. As far as the sick that are poor or sick who are the rich, even diseases like cancer and leprosy can only be cured by Sahaja Yoga. We treat people without taking a single part. We have cured thousands of people all over the world without taking a single pie from them, whether they are poor, rich or anything. Mentally, there are many people who are disturbed. For example, most of the money of the poor goes for drinking. They drink like fishes. They waste their energy in drinking. You might think I'm talking on prohibition, but drinking is against human sustenance. Now, you cannot ask people to stop drinking, it's an impossibility. If you tell anybody that you stop drinking, he cannot stop. Most of the poor people, so-called poor sometimes I feel, have lots of money to waste in drinking. We must see to the other side of the poor also. By giving them more money, are we really making them responsible? Are we making them better people? Are we making them good citizens? And are we making them one with the divine force? So, supposing a poor man comes to you and he is a drinking fellow. Now, you cannot tell him don't drink. If you tell him don't drink, he'll hit you hard. If there are ten more, there's more danger. And such prohibition has never worked. But you'll be amazed to know that in the Ahmednagar district, there are thousands of people who have just given up drinking just like that by getting this realization. Now, what is realization, if you understand, in one uh, stroke, you will know that this is what we should have first. And then other things should follow. Is that you, by realization, you get to know yourself. You got, uh, get to know your own powers which are hidden within. You get to know what are you, and you get to know the absolute. As you said, it's very true. Without getting to self-realization, you will not know what is really right and what is wrong. There cannot be any absolute value because you have not yet discovered your absolute. Everything is relative, that's why there is a confusion. But supposing you discover, supposing I say, keep it as a hypothesis, you discover your spirit, the absolute. If you discover that, then relative whatever are the problems you know, through the vibrations that are flowing through you, you can make out whether it is right or wrong. If it is wrong, the vibrations will stop immediately. I've been saying that cancer cannot be cured by anything else but Sahaja Yoga, and we have cured cancer of so many people. The other day I went to Saswar, and you know there were lots of sick people around. Out of them was a blind man from the year when he was five years, and for about twenty-five years he has been a blind person. His both the pupils were turned upside down, and he could not see anything, you could only see the white retina. And he started seeing within ten minutes' time. If you want to write, you can write to the President's estate and ask the Secretary, Mr. Madhappa. There I have also cured our President, no doubt. But apart from that, there was a little girl who was the daughter of a sentry who was a Muslim gentleman. And he called and he said that this girl cannot see at all, Mother, and she's a young girl of seven, eight years, and she's lost her eyesight because there was a fire. She also, within five or ten minutes, started seeing so clearly that she saw my husband's suit, which had white lines on. Sahaja Yoga is the only way you can solve the troubles of the downfront. There's no other way out. Because unless and until you are realized, you have, must have seen how these uh, social workers react. I have also been in the social work, and I have seen their reactions, how they behave. Because they are imperfect. Till this instrument is put to the mains, this cannot work out properly. 
it is still an imperfect instrument. You must get the instrument perfected. It's all ready. The instrument is within you. It is just to be perfected. All your diseases can be cured. Now, what about poverty? Poverty, as you know, is a Lakshmi Tattva. It resides in your Nabi. The Lakshmi Tattva resides in your Nabi. And if your Nabi Chakra is cured, your Lakshmi Tattva is cured. In our country, because of black magic, because of horrible gurus, because of all kinds of bad things we think about others as far as Nabi is concerned, because of fasting, nonsensical fasting, because of going to temples and taking bad prasadas, all these things have caused the augmentation of the Nabi Chakra. Now here the Sahaja Yogis who have come have definitely gained materially, all of them have gained materially. If there is anybody can stand up and tell me, we have not gained. We have had very poor people coming to us. We had one gentleman coming to us from Kalwa. He told me, Mother, since I have joined this Sahaja Yoga, I am very well off. I was surprised because every time he would come from Kalwa, bring me a garland. I said, what happened? He said, I don't know, but I was walking on the soil of my land I, uh, every morning and suddenly one day a gentleman came to me and told me that, will you please sell me your, this clay from your land at such a such price because it's a very good clay, very good for brick making. And he started paying me such a lot. Perhaps you do not realize, sir, that these vibrations are dynamic, are blessings of God. And once you touch them, the Lakshmi Tattva improves just like that. You don't have to bother to look after the downtrodden or anything. Anybody, whether he is rich or whether he is poor, when he comes to Sahaja Yoga, he gets related to the whole. This sensitivity in all the people who are doing work, good work for helping the poor, becomes really enlightened. Only by touching a thing, you can cure people. By just standing there, you can stop accidents. By just thinking about it, you can manage the whole show. It is, that is how, by going deeper into it, into the deeper being, that is the whole, the Virat, you learn that you are a part of the whole, only you have to be connected, the dynamics start flowing in. But of course, you cannot become very rich with surgery, neither very poor, because as in the nature, these imbalances are never there. The other day I told you, a human being grows up to say certain height of five, six, seven feet, that's all not more, even the, say, a mango tree grows up to a certain point. The nature looks after you. God looks after you. He does everything. Let us be connected only to God, and He looks after us. I agree that philanthropic work is a very essential part of a country like ours. But we have to know that philanthropy is not the job of God. Human beings have created poverty. Human beings have created all these problems, so they should solve their own problem. It is not the work of God. God's work is to bless, to gift. When you go to Him, when you enter into the kingdom of God, He blesses you. Not too much, not too less, but the satisfaction and the, and the joy of owning it. Actually, we do not own anything. Whatever we own, so-called, is just a myth in our minds. Even in our poor people, we have given them sometimes very wrong ideas and they have formed a sort of a group thinking they are very poor and they can assert a political pressure and all sorts of things. We have to be careful that when we want to do something for the poor, let us do it from the within and not from the without. Actually, this is such a wonderful country. Here you don't need much. You have seen me, I can sleep on the street, I can move about anywhere I like. There is no need to have too much. That's why Gandhiji always said that we should press on our sadhana. He told all the Gandhivadi, Gandhi, Gandhian people that you should have less. But what you find, most of the Gandhivadis have the greatest amount of black money, the greatest amount of diamonds, and the greatest amount of money. They might wear ordinary clothes, but at heart, they are not. This heart has to be changed. Unless and until you change the heart of the people, unless and until sincerely they really feel the way you feel, not only that, but they just feel it as an actual feeling within us. For example, if there's a poor man standing before me, 
Immediately I can feel his Nabi Chakra. I can put my hand in Nabi Chakra, I can solve his problem, just like that. It's a fact, you know that. All the Sahaja Yogis who are here, most of them are Sahaja Yogis, will say that Mataji has done that. The poorest of poorest can be touched by Lakshmi Tattva and can be cured. That is the most important part that his Lakshmi Tattva must be cured and not his money or material. Now the difference between Lakshmi Tattva and material, you must find out. Lakshmi Tattva is a person, he may be just an ordinary driver, but he can be like a bacha. You see, we had a driver with us for many years. He was just like a bacha, and I knew that he was like a king because he was a king in his previous life. The way he was like a bacha, that nothing would disturb him and everything would satisfy him. If you tell him that you have to wait for three hours, he'll wait. If you tell him you cannot stay here now, you can go and sleep anywhere, he'll do. Whatever you tell him, he would not hesitate and he was such a happy personality. Now the reason is, I would say he is better than many rich people who cannot sleep in the night and who are all the time thinking about dirty tricks that they are going to try and many of these politicians who are just planning all the time all the dirty designs. We have to purify ourselves from within. Poverty is just a wee bit of that symptom. Now to say that people are very much tortured, I know that they are being, uh, of course, very much put down. But what is the solution you have? If the solution is to give them some money or to help them money-wise or to just put little cure, that is not going to help. You have to awaken their Lakshmi Tattva. I am going to the essence, to the base of it, from where the problem comes. Lakshmi stands with one hand like this, one hand like this, and with two Kamalai in her hand. And she is a woman with a very simple sari, white sari. This shows a Lakshmi Pati, a person who has got Lakshmi, the satisfaction of Lakshmi, has always a way of giving. All the time he is giving. If the Lakshmi Tattva of all these so-called multimillionaires is awakened, they will be frightened of keeping all this black money with them and extracting the blood of the poor. If the Lakshmi Tattva of the poor is enlightened, they'll be ashamed of begging and being parasitic. No use developing parasitic uh, tendencies into them. A parasite is to be hated like leprous. In this country we have had enough of this beggary. Our leaders also have become greatest uh, beggars of the world. All over the world, if you go, you feel so ashamed. It does not matter if half of this country is dead because they can be born again. But live with your self-respect. This kind of beggary that is on and this kind of begging that we are doing with other countries is so shameful for us because God has given us such a blessing of this yoga bhumi. What a mess we have made out of it by not understanding our own values, our own culture and our own heritage that we have got from God. This is the only country in the whole world which is yoga-oriented. Do you understand the importance of this country? Not only that it is yoga-oriented, but also, also it is a Punya Bhumi here, all the great saints have come and left. Even Zoroaster, whom Parsis worship, is nothing but an incarnation of the Tatraya, and you know how we worship him in our Sahaja Yoga, how we worship Muhammad Sahab in our Sahaja Yoga, how we understand where he stands within us. The deeper, the undercurrents of all these problems of the whole world can be solved by you people, the Indians. You are being blessed to be Indians in this country and not to feel so bad if you don't have one helicopter or one transistor. Poverty is of the mind, I can tell you, is not more of eating or non-eating. If a person has a mind which is sickening, he may be the multimillionaire, still he'll be crying, I don't have this, I don't have that. Nothing can satisfy human beings, and you know the economics law is such that no want is satiable in general. In particular, everything gets satisfied, but nobody is satisfied. With Sahaja Yoga, you can give them satisfaction and self-respect. Develop there self-respect, teach them how to come up. 
not to look after them as just downtrodden. I have had a very good opportunity of working for a blind school here. And the blind school people wanted to collect money and this and that and all that, and I said nothing to it. You are not to make them begging girls. They can all work out something for themselves. They started working out. Then they made some nice things and uh, met covers and this and that. So they said, now who will market? I said, you go all out to do the marketing for them. But then I told them that in Japan, I was surprised that the blind were taught massage. I said, you give them realization and let them do uh, massage. If a realized blind person gives massaging, all these foreigners would be paying them at least 100 rupees per massage minimum. And if that person is blind, it's much easier to do the massage. But the people would not accept this kind of a thing. They said, no, no, Mataji, then you see, you should not give them realization. Here we lack the understanding of the depth of our problem. They, they said, Mataji, how can you give realization to these blind people? And the blind people would have got it in no time, only they could have been cured and they would have had this realization. But because that organization belonged to other great people of great thinking and wisdom, they would not accept such a situation where I would say, all right, you bring all your blind and I'll try to give them their eyesight. They are not willing to accept this. I will tell you a very simple example that I cured a leukemia of a little boy of 10 years who was a patient, a blood, blood cancer patient in Delhi. Of course, we never charge a single pie. No Sahajogi is allowed to charge a single pie for whatever he does. You know that. Not a single pie. And this boy was cured. He was brought by Dr. Mule, and Dr. Mule referred me to the medical institute. The medical institute came to me. And just see what was their proposition. You give us the list of people whom you have cured, how you are cured, where they live, and all. I said, for what? I'm not asking for any money. Nothing is selling here. You are as if you are <coughs> going into cross-examination, as if I'm out here for any donation from you. You just come and see for yourself. I don't write the names of people whom I good food or how many morsels they have eaten. This is my love that is flowing. This is my love that is working out. You people can't understand love. You want me to write down all the people I've cured? I refuse to. This is the way they look at a thing. They do not know the power of love. For us now, it is necessary first to generate the power of love through Sahaja Yoga. It is very easy. Sahaja Yoga is not the blessing of one year or one yuga, but of all the yugas. You have to get it. You have to get to know your Atma. You have to know yourself. And the last judgment is here now. There is no need to think of another last judgment coming in. Here now, by knowing your Atma, you will get the power of God flowing through you. Like when I put it to the mains, the power starts flowing through us. And then this powerful thing can communicate that dynamic power. What is this power tea? Is at the feet of that Lord who can just flow it up. I agree that going to temples and churches, there is no God. But even going to poor, will not help, I can tell you this much today, but going to the roots of poverty, by understanding why there is poverty and why human being, beings behave like this, you have to transform the whole thing. We are still in the flower state. We all have to become fruits. All of us have to become fruits today. If we are not fruits, we cannot solve the problem of our country and of another country. If this takes place, if this tremendous transformation takes place in our country today, then the whole world is going to be led by us, and in any case it is going to be led, which I'm sure, hundred percent sure, that the time is coming when the whole world will have to listen to us on this point to solve their problems. There are countries, communist countries are there, people have everything. I've been to all the countries, I've been to Russia. Those who talk of communism should go to Russia and see for themselves. Those who talk of capitalism should go to America and see for themselves how stupid and silly and useless people they have been, how their society is finished. Money cannot bring you happiness. If you want to make people happy, then awaken their, which Nabi Chakra, as I call it, or you can call it the Lakshmi Tattva. And the Lakshmi Tattva can only be awakened, only be awakened through Sahaja Yoga, by which the whole country will be transformed. 
like you go to a barren garden and you see the garden absolutely in a barren condition suddenly water comes in and the power of the water generates all that affluence and suddenly you find the whole place bubbling with joy and that's what is going to happen to this our country which people think us to be poor still i would say we may be poor outwardly because we don't have very good clothes maybe according to them and we don't have too many plastics with us what is their affluence is nothing but plastics and rubbers they eat plastic and they sleep on rubbers they don't even have so much of uh, natural cotton with them our affluence is our yoga is our power our sustenance our humanity and our humanity has to be sustained we have to have many more people like mr vijay varchand who think of the whole of the all the people who are suffering but philanthropy of sahaj yoga is different because for me who is the other when somebody is just the part and parcel of my being itself my finger is paining i am just rubbing it and i must do it for that i don't have to awaken people they just get it you just stand here a person you get a headache and you ask the person have you got a headache yes you rub your head and rub his head and finish it off you just cannot help it because the macrocosm the virat informs you when you are one with it that see the other fellow is suffering you become that you become collectively conscious it is not a lecture or anything but it is a becoming within you that you start feeling on your fingers on your fingertips what are the centers catching what is the problem of the other person how to cure it what to do it everything all this knowledge is given in sahaj yoga absolutely free out of so many who are sitting here you can ask how many have been suffering from diseases have been cured completely and since they have been realized not a single pie has been given to the doctors it is not necessary to look after your health not necessary to do much about it we have had people who have had three heart attacks and now they are going strong we have had people who had leukemia who had all kinds of diseases today you won't believe they have had the disease because now the inside is completely into balance integrated and blessed by god's divine power within this is our heritage we have to cash on it and by this only we are going to remove the poverty one day you will see and <clears throat> not by patching up few things i would request uh, mr vijay merchant and we have another great social worker with us is gidu bhai kota uh, that you should pay little more attention to our sahaj yoga and see the dynamics of this sahaj yoga you'll be amazed how one person the person who spoke to you just now was uh, from rahuri these two persons they have given realization to 10000 people just go and see their houses just when see their children they're bubbling with joy with happiness and you do not feel any poverty in their hearts at all their hearts have been enriched and they are doing so well because the energy comes within you the saraswati tatva is also enlightened and you start thinking as to what is to be done and how to how to make your life happy but money is not everything food is not everything unless and until you get to know your atma you can never be happy so go to the roots and it's so easy you don't have to pay anything you don't have to have any organization nothing it just works just like this so why worry and why uh, just think of something terrible now more we i had talked to bidu bhai also that they were enamored by one guru who was showing some miracles and i i had met somebody from morvi who came to see me and i told him that you just don't have anything to do with this horrible fellow because a day will come when kalaki is at work and there will be destruction he wouldn't listen to me i went to andhra for your information i'll tell you i went to andhra i told these andhra people that you don't grow this uh, tobacco in andhra there are two types of people one who are making lots of money the other are the so called poor who are doing lot of black magic <coughs> i talked to both of them i told them don't do black magic because if you do black magic lakshmi tattva will disappear if the black magic comes from this uh, this side the lakshmi goes from the other side and they just didn't listen to me and i talked to these people who are growing tobacco they wouldn't listen there are on three tapes there is a lecture 
where I said that the sea is the incarnation of Dattatreya. It will take a respite, I believe me, and that's what has happened with us. We have to understand that God knows all of us. He knows us in masks, and He knows where we are going and what we are doing. Your Bombay has escaped recently a very big drought. But please take heed and take to God. It is no question of going to Himalayas, of course, and no question of running away from it, but get it within yourself. Try as many as you can bring in here. If the saints are there, those who are Sahaja Yogis are saints, then God definitely will bless you, definitely will bless you. And the same people who are realized today have done tremendous work in the villages. They have emancipated so many villages without any money, without anything. When I go in the villages, I'm really surprised how people get cured, how they are helped, how they get energetic, how they understand things. It's most amazing. So the power of all powers, that is the power of God's love. Let us take to it. Let us take advantage of it and leave everything in the hands of God. Only get Him into everyone you think who is suffering. You get me hundred people who are suffering, I will see to that. Today, if the whole hall was filled, I would have cured all of them. You know that I have done it. It's not difficult. It is no boasting, it's a fact. It's a fact. It works in five minutes for so many people can get it. But people do not want to face reality and they do not want to attend to it. Now, we have only so many Sahaja Yogis in Bombay, so you can imagine, I've worked here for nine years. We have some more, of course, in the outer centers, but here in the central, we have so many or little more. So you can see how people are. And the work you are doing from outside is all like a blind person going doing this work, that work, that work, that work. Politicians also think they are doing great work. All right, they are doing. Social workers are also doing great work. Everybody is doing. But there's no coordination, there's no integration, and there's no satisfaction of what one is doing. The reason is all of them belong to the one whole, and they have not yet connected with the whole which one has to do. We are finding our wholesomeness all over the world, whether we are Indians, Americans, or anything. We are all just trying to find out our wholesomeness, and the answer is Sahaja Yoga. It is Sahaja Yoga. There's no other answer to any one of these problems. Today I am telling you, again, you can tell me afterwards. You give me your problems, you tell me who are the downtrodden, let me see. Let me see who are the downtrodden. Now you, somebody wanted me to go and see the fishermen. I said, all right, I'll go and see. I'm sure if I, they get realization, their fishery will improve definitely 100%, I'm sure of it. Everything improves because God's blessings are there and God has got these six qualities which makes Him Bhagavan is one of them is Shubha, auspicious. Another is Kalyan. Another is Aishwari. Like these, the six qualities of God. These six qualities emit from the being. And once you face it, you get it. You want to do Kalyana, all right, then face people to God. And this is the way by which you can face it. You don't have to organize churches and temples or anything. It's just the energy which has to flow, Shakti that has to flow. Like you can see a wood is lying there, has nothing. But if you enlighten it, it gives you light, fire, everything. In the same way, enlightenment is the only way to solve the problem. And all of us should try to enlighten as many po people as possible. Our work, of course, is more for the middle class because the extremes do not take place. But when the middle course increases, the river flows on both the sides. She can feed on the both the sides. Gradually, the both the sides can also join it. But the depth is in the center, in the Madhya Marga, and there it works out. It is only the middle class which can work it out, because they have the values necessary, they have the feelings necessary, and they have the blessings necessary, because they lead a very normal life. Once they learn their swimming, they must know themselves before helping others. You must help yourself, you must become yourself before you help others. Once they achieve that, they can easily help others, and that is being done. It is such a silent work of Sahaja Yoga that we have not maintained any statistics. 
We have not yet been able to say, here there are people who have given realization to minimum of 10,000 or 8,000 people. There are people who have cured thousands of people who are sitting here just like ordinary people, but they don't know about it. And they'll say, we didn't do mother, it just worked, it was just happening, it happened. So this is what is a very dynamic force. I would request all the social workers to open their eyes to this tremendous discovery that has come to our country and to see for themselves what it is like, what it means. It transforms the personality into such a dynamic web that an ordinary boy can become a great cricket player. An ordinary musician can become a great musician. An ordinarily dull boy can become a first-class student. It has happened. There are many who will say it has happened in their cases. So many things have happened like this. And so we have to depend on the mercy of God for this. Only thing is we have to desire and ask for it. I think the other day I had a talk with one of the political leaders. I said, politics without adhyatma has no life. In the same way, I'll say social work without adhyatma has no meaning. Without adhyatma, without the atma in it, without the spirit of God in it, you are doing it because in you something is dying. In you something is feeling that what is feeling in you is the part of the whole. So know the whole and you'll be so dynamic, you'll be so great, and the whole thing will flow from you and you can really help thousands of people. I hope it's a good thing today we have two great social workers here, I uh, put forward to them this kind of a proposition. So on behalf of all the surge yogis, we render all our services. Any number of downtrodden people you have got, you send them over to our centers and we'll see to them. May God bless you all.